Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again. And hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in yet another spectacular presentation, another motive inspired by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God and praying that you are going to be given the hope, the rest inside your spirit and soul, and so that you get preserved through the word of God. Today, I want to talk about the effective prayer the effective prayer and also praying that you are going to be given the rightful relevant impact through this weight which will enable you to understand the importance of your prayer life so that you understand the actual impact of prayer, the necessity of prayer. If you are one that has always been reluctant to pray, you understand more about how prayer can cause an impact, how prayer can move mountains, now, let us go to the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 1. And it reads, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain disciples of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. James is beheaded in front of his congregation in Jerusalem. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and he delivered him to four quotidians of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter, he brings him forth to the people. This is also about the same season, the same hour and time that Jesus was also persecuted, rejected, and crucified. It was the Easter season after the Last Supper. And Peter is now suffering persecutions also during that particular season. And he has been thrown into prison Peter was therefore 
kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. The church remained in prayer after Peter had been thrown into prison. They remained in prayer, they did not cease. These that are praying, they've been taught how to pray by Peter. These that are interceding, they've been taught how to intercede by Peter. As prayer was done in the effective dimension, there is a prayer that is done effectively. And that level of prayer is not just running your lips. There is a prayer that can be done at the level where you can actually feel that you are moving, actually feel that you are moving mountains. There is a prayer that can actually be done to the level uh, that you can feel it inside your spirit that you are wrestling with the certain powers and forces of darkness. Though they are invisible forces, you can feel the wrestle from within you while listening in prayer. And there is that age of the spirit that is contrary against the demonic spirits. And there is that age of the spirit that is opposing the flesh that gives you the energy and the motivation a driving force to continue interceding while you are praying. And the church continued praying even though Peter had been put behind cells. And there was something that happened where Peter had been locked up where Peter had been put behind bars and the, the cells where they had kept Peter they were four quarters meaning that you had to enter through three gates for you to get to the cell where Peter had been locked up I remember going through this passage and I was preaching about the three chambers of hell. I was explaining that when you depart from this realm, before you give your life to Jesus Christ, there are two gods from the prison cells of hell that are given the authority by Lucifer to come and take your soul and they descend underneath with your unborn again soul. You will not wrestle with these gods because you do not have the light. You will not dispute with these two gods from hell why? Because you never gave your life to Jesus Christ. And they will descend with you through three gates that lead to the underworld. Finally, when they've gone through the three portals which represent the three gates, in the deepest underneath of the basement of hell. The final gate leads you to the multitudes of souls 
that are trapped underneath where they live in cells in groups in numbers like they are in squatter camps i've been in, into that dimension where lucifer has caged many souls in the prison cells of hades and those souls that are not in prison cells they are building cities underneath of the kingdom of darkness there is slavery a level of enslavement that is happening in hades after the three gates have been passed and many that did not give their lives to jesus they are bewailing they are lamenting they are in torments night and day the very same people that you wrote for rest in peace on their tombs on their graves on their tombstones those people the majority of them they are not in rest save for those except for those that gave their lives to christ genuinely and peter has been put behind the four quarters meaning that there were three gates that the guards had to go through before the last final gate where they put peter behind bars and this is an impossible place an impossible position for anyone that has got any intention of going to rescue peter you'll have to go through three gates and through those three gates uh, there are guards that are watching over there are guards that are standing with weapons so even if you are a prisoner in such a structure of a prison it is impossible for you to escape why because you have to go through four gates and the first gate that you have to go through is the actual gate that leads into the prison yard into the prison cells where you are locked up peter is behind cells in the very last quarter of the prison and he is sleeping between two soldiers while he is imprisoned in the four quarters where you have to go through four quarters to reach to the prison yard to reach to the prison cell peter is also chained with leg irons and handcuffed and on top of that there are two guards that are holding weapons that are seated beside him i'm telling you there is no way you can explain any means of escaping out of such a prison these are the types of prisons where if they lock you up the only way you can escape is through suicide and how do you commit suicide when they are chaining your hands and you have got leg irons you are trapped 
your only deliverance can only come through God. Peter is bound, as I, as I have explained, with the two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him. Now this is the part that I need to explain. How does the angel of the Lord come upon him? What has provoked the heavens? Or what has triggered the heavens to release an angel to Peter? It is the prayer that was being done by the church behind the scenes. The church continued in prayer without ceasing as Peter was bound. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. Meaning that at that very moment, the guards fell fast asleep in a very unusual way. Up to now, no one knows what happened to the guards that were cutting the, the tomb where Jesus' body had been buried. Why? Because they pushed a very big rock that covered that entrance. And they believed that it was impossible for anyone to come and steal that body. Why? Because before Jesus had died, there had been a word of prophecy that had been given by Jesus that he was going to resurrect after three days. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the community of the Jews, they made an appeal to Pilate. Why? Because they wanted to make sure that even if Jesus resurrects, there is no way that he can come out of that tomb. That was a carnal way of understanding Jesus. Why? Because Jesus, when he resurrected, he entered behind closed doors. So they did not know that this resurrection was going to be in a supernatural dimension. On the third day, the guards were found sleeping, struck by an unusual light. Two angels had already entered and the stone had been rolled away. There was no bulldozer that was hired to come and roll that stone away. There was power that was allowed by God to descend upon that place. Hypnotized the two soldiers and they fell down and the stone was rolled away. Christ is resurrected. And there were two angels representing the heavens in that place. Peter is fast asleep in prison and an angel of the Lord smote him. What level of sleeping is that? Why is you a prisoner? It means he is sleeping while he has enough faith. 
He's no longer the same Peter who could not watch for an hour in the Garden of Gethsemane alongside James and John. When Jesus had gone to pray further and he was praying up until his sweat became as drops of blood and then and an angel of the lord descended again and strengthened him and when he went back to check on peter james and john the scripture says he found them sleeping for sorrow this is not the same peter who was earlier found sleeping for sorrow this one is now sleeping out of rest out of peace while he is in leg irons and in chains he does not feel bothered he knows that his life is in protection under the lord while he is a prisoner how is that possible the prayer that was being done by the church provoked the heavens and the heavens were left with no choice but to unleash an angel of the lord to go and rescue peter out of prison and peter is awakened by an angel and the angel raised him up saying arise up quickly and immediately his chains fell off from his hands there was no need for an angel of the lord to tell peter reach out for the keys on the waist of these soldiers no this is an angel of the lord all that is required is a word of deliverance and the chains that were being put on peter's hands leg irons that were on peter's legs they were falling off from his legs and the angel of the lord ushered him to the first iron bars of the cells and they walked out and the angel ushered him to the first gate which leads to the last quarter of the prison yard and the angel said unto him cast thy garment about you and follow me and he went out and followed him while is all this was happening peter thought that he was in a vision but this was an angel of the lord that had been dispatched after prayer when they were past the first and the second word they came unto the iron gate that leads to the city meaning that they went through three gates after coming out of the first gate that leads to the prison yard then they reached the main iron gate which is the largest which leads to the city which opened to them of his own accord and they went out all these gates they were just opening and i want you to know that all these gates they were guards meaning that when the angel of the lord 
would appear before each and every gate. The soldiers that were on that gate, they would fall asleep. And Peter would enter through that gate with an angel of the Lord. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. Now this is the part that I want you to listen. Whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together and they were still praying. The same church that has been praying for Peter, praying for the release of Peter, that is exactly where Peter went. And this is the place where the people that were praying are supposed to see the result of their prayer and then they testify that their prayer has been answered. And as Peter knocked at, at the door of the gate, this gate is a gate that Peter is now knocking. And if they open this gate, this gate does not need an angel of the Lord to open it. It is a gate which now needs to be opened by believers after praying so that they may confirm the result of their effectiveness after prayer. And when the damsel knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. This damsel was part of the prayer. Instead of opening the gate for Peter to enter, she did not open, but went back to those that were interceding in the house, in the main lounge. And they said unto her, Are you mad? But she constantly affirmed that it was Peter. Then they said, It is his angel. Peter continued knocking. I want you to know that after having done an effective prayer, if you don't know how God answers, if you pray effectively and you are not expectant, if you just pray and you are not being eye opened by the Holy Spirit to watch around, to be analytic spiritually, to assess the atmosphere, to be faithful, and watch out for results that are coming. You can still pray, and after God has answered you, you will not be able to testify after, after the prayer has been already delivered in form of results. Peter continues knocking, but no one was prepared to go and open that door. The same people that have prayed for an, uh, until an angel of the Lord led Peter through four gates, which represent four quarters of a prison. They, they no longer want to open the last gate which confirms the, the, the deliverance of the one that they were praying for. The effectiveness of a prayer does not start and end in the prayer room. It ends after prayer. Are you able to notice the things that are happening after prayer? Are you able to notice the things that have been affected by prayer? Are you able to notice 
the atmosphere that has been triggered by prayer are you able to notice the things that have been provoked by prayer are you able to notice the changes that have been affected by prayer are you able to notice what has been attracted by prayer are you able to notice the results that have been provided by prayer the church could not notice peter is still knocking at the door it is now difficult for peter to enter the list of all gates this gate that peter can no longer enter it is the gate that is now guarded by those that were praying for him They started disputing why this in the house. Others saying it is an angel. Why can't one of you just go and open the door? That is what the devil does. He's doing it amongst the believers. They have already started disputing, debating. All those long hours of prayer. They might go into the drain. Why? Because. Your miracle is knocking at the door and you are busy arguing. When you, you, have, you have started praying, you must be prepared to know that the things that you are praying for, they might come anytime knocking at your front door. And when you have finished praying, you must know that after prayer, something must happen praying without an expectant mind is very dangerous it is not effective peter continued knocking at the door and when they had opened the door and saw him they were astonished but he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace declared unto them how the Lord brought him out of the prison and said go show this unto James and to, and to the brethren and he departed and went into another place child of God the early church was so prayerful at this level they were so prayerful to the level that angels would appear and rescue them as prisoners out of prison. The likes of Paul and Silas, they prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners hated them. And earthquakes, great earthquakes, shook the buildings of prisons doors were opened and not only was paul and silas loosed but even the prisoners and even after they had been loosed the keepers of the prison ran amok and they were in panic but still they found paul and silas not in lake irons or in chains but they had not yet escaped i'm talking about men that caused soldiers and keepers guards of prisons to give their lives to jesus that is the impact of the prayer that was in the early church where is that prayer that would cause such effectiveness in the realms of the spirit where is that level of prayer child of god i have been sent today to utter on behalf of the holy spirit to lecture you on behalf of the effective prayer the effectiveness of a prayer avails much in the life of a righteous man and i'm here to teach you 
to lecture you on the effectiveness of a prayer during these seasons of intercessions know that every intercession that we are conducting is provoking a lot of entities in the realms of the spirit and they pray that the holy spirit avails the effectiveness of all these prayers and when the results manifest you must not be found as one of those that were in the house is your miracle will be knocking on the door and you remain behind closed doors forgetting all the prayers that were done i pray that you're given the wisdom after intercession after prayer in the name of jesus